In a dark city, bright lights illuminate shadowy rooftops. Above them, a group of criminals runs, fleeing from the scene of their crime, only to launch to a battle against a Cape Crusader that is over very quickly, resulting in that man's victory. That's right, folks. Today, we're talking all about making your RPGs like Batman. Hello, and welcome back to Destiny Dorks. I'm Kyle. I'm Dork. A couple quick things. One, if you'd like to help us out a lot, you could like, share, comment, subscribe. Specifically, sharing is the best way to help us grow. And two, if you'd really, really like to help us out, links in the description below will take you to all of the places that you can go to purchase our games, whether you're a physical person and you want a physical copy of our games or a digital copy. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about how to make your games a little bit like Batman. Now, as we're going through this uh, sort of image kaleidoscope, I want you to take a look at something and see what reaches out and grabs you. These are all still shots of Gotham from different types of medium, whether it's comic books or video games or television and movies. And I really want you to notice that there's one thing that binds them all together, and it's verticality. So here's the deal. As a fantasy RPG designer and as a fantasy RPG lover, one of the things I think you can't do if you want to have your game be like Batman is you cannot, under any circumstances, deny the importance of verticality in your games. Now, Batman, whether he's jumping down a rooftop to, you know, glide into oncoming traffic or leaping off a fire escape to kick some unsuspecting goon right in his throat, it doesn't matter. All of this means that when you are making your games, you have to feature verticality in them if you want them to feel like Batman. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how does that work? Well, actually, there's a lot of really good real-world historical precedent for verticality. This, for example, is a uh, still, not still life, but it's actually a painting of what looks like Constantinople um, way back in the day. You can see just how tall the minarets are. I believe that's the Agia Sophia, but don't quote me on that. Um, or at the very least, it is a building of intense verticality. Um, also, if you're going to be doing things in Renaissance or medieval-inspired Europe, cathedrals are especially tall, particularly the big ones, because places of worship were, you know, supposed to be giant and imposing. It's what allowed people to, A, know they were there, B, it was a sign of God's importance to those people, and C, also helped to work to establish the prestige and importance of a certain kingdom. Um, but if, even if you don't want to include in cathedrals or religious structures of any kind, these long, uh, like long, these tall uh, Renaissance era townhouses are actually going to be kind of interesting if you want to put them in. Um, in many cases, these Renaissance style townhouses would have dominated early medieval cities um, into the or, or late medieval cities and into the early Renaissance. Uh, so, for example, cities like Milan would you or have cities like that one uh, but kyle you might be saying to yourself uh what if i don't what if i really don't want to include uh you know medieval style buildings in my in my stuff i mean surely there's there can't be nope there's massively vertical buildings in pretty much every single culture um i didn't put the pyramids in here for obvious reasons i feel like that's an obvious one uh but again these are both temples and castles from uh, feudal japan and if you want to go outside of feudal japan you can't get any more beautifully vertical than the temples of angkor wat in cambodia these are just a couple examples of different things that you can include in your games and i think it's important when you're building the setting this is the fluff part of our video by the way when you're building the setting and constructing the lore this i think is a critical thing to do you should for all intents and purposes, you should uh, be trying to make sure verticality is first and foremost in your games. From a rules perspective, there are two things that I think you should do. Um, and the first is you li literally just need to let all your players glide. Like, just let them all glide. Let them glide. Let them fly. Give them a grappling hook if you're feeling particularly saucy. Um, it's one of the things that you really definitely need to do. Um, just let them do it and be surprised at how excited they are to leap off of buildings, jump into things, and, uh, you know, kick people in the face. I think it's going to be one of the coolest things you can possibly do or ever do. Um, and again, let them all glide. If you want people to feel like Batman, you have to let them glide. You have to let them do cool stuff. Also, um, here's the other thing that I think is really, really important here. Bonus points if they give them cool ways to propel themselves, right? Uh, one of the funniest things that I've ever seen or ever done, and I've heard multiple people do this, was that like there's a thing called the decanter of endless water in Dungeons and Dragons, and usually what somebody does is they get two of them and they chain them to a backpack and then they hit the command word, and then the next thing you know, 
they're immediately like rushing everywhere, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, something that you should, in fact, do uh, and give bonus points for if your friends are going to do that. So uh, now let's look at another common thing. Look at him. He's just having such a great time. I mean, isn't he just having a blast and a half? Look at how happy Batman is and look at how unhappy Batman is here. Again, if you don't know what the common thread here is, it's it's a focus on fisticuffs, right? Now, I understand that part of the core fantasy and part of the core enjoyment about role-playing games in general is they let you live out whatever fantasy you want. That includes things like wizards. Um, however, if you're going to be playing as Batman, if you're going to be playing Batman, the one thing I need you to do and I need you to think about is how important fisticuffs are to the caped crusader. So in order to encourage people to do that, when they are in melee combat, and melee combat only, all of you ranged builds, all of you wizards, you've all had it too good for too long, and I say this as one of you, I am primarily a caster person if slash when I play games. But we've had it too good for too long, we need to give the melee people a little bit of lovin'. So when your players engage in melee, they get something called BP or Batman points, Yes, like the Cape Crusader. No, not like the oil company. Uh, but they get to do cool stuff with those points. So, for example, they can disappear from sight from one turn. You could disable an enemy from attacking with one limb. You could have the damage from another attack. I particularly like the idea of them disappearing from sight for one turn because I think it's really reminiscent of what Batman would do. And I'm sure that you, as GMs, can find your own amazing ways to incorporate some of the stuff from Batman into the Batman point system. I think it's definitely the best call. And last but certainly not least, we have to talk about the importance of stealth. Now, not everyone in a role-playing game is going to want stealth or have stealth. And a lot of people are not going to be particularly good at stealth, even if you do include it and make it very important in your games. Uh, traditional stealth systems, I'm looking squarely at Dungeons & Dragons, kind of suck. Actually, they don't kind of suck. They really suck. Um, the idea that if you fail one skill check or if somebody else does really well on a perception check, you're just cooked off the bat, is is a kind of a terrible way to run stealth in an RPG, if I'm being completely honest. So rather than do that, that binary system that is, frankly speaking, not particularly that good, what I really want to do is I want to incorporate line of sight. And I want you to incorporate line of sight as well in your games if you're going to make the stealth parts of Batman really, really interesting. Now, what line of sight is, for those of you who are uninitiated, is it's essentially the line that someone draws from one miniature to another one to determine whether or not a miniature can be targeted with a spell, a weapon, whatever. Um, if that line of sight is broken, whether that's by an object or a piece of nature, another miniature, whatever, generally speaking, you don't get the ability to shoot at or do something to the target that's not in your line of sight. And so, one of the things that you should do is potentially include something like this stealth cone. Um, I pulled this very blurry JPEG uh, from another game, but again, it's a game that I particularly liked because of, again, access to the cone. This would allow players, if they know what an enemy's cone is or have a rough idea of what an enemy's cone is, to move from cover to cover and utilize, hopefully, the environmental features that you have built into your game in order to get the drop on their enemies. And honestly, using the environment for an unfair advantage to get the drop on your enemies is the most Batman thing I think you can possibly do. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed our little romp into the world of Gotham and DC Comics. I think Batman lends himself to being a wonderful role-playing game inspiration. It's something that I think you are genuinely, genuinely going to enjoy. Uh, with that being said, again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all of the other stuff that I would particularly really appreciate that you do. Uh, it helps us out immensely, and I, I mean that sincerely. Um, like... All of y'all are helping me out in the absolute best way possible. And so, please make sure that you do that. And if you have enjoyed this, I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.